Greetings, beautiful earthlings. My name is Star. If you are new here, I don't know how you found me, but I am super grateful to have you. And if you are returning, y'all the real MVP, you already know. Today, my friends, I have a deck that I actually never wanted to get. Never, ever, ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever. And that's the Prism Oracle. As you can see, yes, there is the rainbow colors on there. There is the hologram, right? And that, you know, to me, when I saw this deck being sold, being marketed, I saw it and I was just kind of like, Ugh, you're reaching, right? You're reaching. And when I looked at the actual cards, um, like the super simplistic, you know, whatever this is, it never, it never called to me. Not once did I put this deck in my, um, in my cart. Not once did I say, maybe I should look at a review of that. Not once. I think it might be on my Amazon wish list just because I throw everything on there that I find. Um, but the reason I actually got this deck is because I have a friend on TikTok whose name is Ash, who is fantastic and wonderful, who got this deck and was like really stoked on it. And I was like, that's cool for you. I'm glad that you're stoked on it. I just don't care for it. And the more I saw Ash interacting with this deck, the more intuitive it became. And Ash did a lot of readings with this deck before I finally actually decided to get it. Um, but I want to, <laughs> I want to say I'm, I'm the type of person where if someone has it, I don't want it. Um, I usually don't go, oh my gosh, where did you get that? I'm going to go buy it right now. Because I don't want people to think I'm biting off of them. And I don't want people to think like, oh, you're just a copycat. Like I've always wanted to stand out and do my own thing and put my own stuff together. So again, because this is a friend of mine, I did not ever want them to feel like I, you know, was taking content from them, right? Um, but the more I saw Ash interacting with this deck, the more intuitive it became, the more I saw Ash building a relationship with it that I didn't have with any Oracle deck. And I was like, damn, yo, that actually looks really cool. And I wonder if I could build that kind of relationship with this deck as well. And eventually I just kind of gave in. What had happened was I had to order this. I did not find it anywhere. And as you guys know, I am done buying things on Amazon. So I actually had to order this from my bookstore, had it special ordered, right? And when it came, I was stoked. I was like, cool, I get to start this awesome, super special relationship with this deck that Ash has. However, if you guys had seen my last video, um, I was talking about how I feel like our perception of a deck creates its energy or it is a reflection of us at the current moment, right? Um, especially because Tarot and Oracle is meant to be like a, a reflection tool, right? A divination tool. And I feel like it reflects us in our journey. It reflects our energy in order to give us our shit on a platter, right? Essentially. So I do not have the relationship with this deck that Ash does, but I think that's important to note because I did also say in the last one, my relationship with a deck is not going to be your relationship with a deck. So please don't ever take something I say and expect it out of that deck because it's not going to happen. I did not put that together until I got this deck, right? I know that in my heart of hearts, I've said it, I just didn't put it together until I got this deck and I started actually playing with it because it started giving me some really harsh cards. And I was like, um, this isn't uh, hello, ouch. And the fact that it has harsh cards in here as well as good cards is important. I cannot stress that enough. It's important because the cards that are in here that are harsh are not in any other deck. Very important. And although they are harsh, I feel like they are so pertinent to the reading because that's something you're not going to get in another deck. That's something you're not going to see somewhere else. And this deck already has a bag because <laughs> I've been playing with it. Um, but let's take a look at the book really fast before we take a look at the cards. I know you're like, could you shut up already? But it's actually a really nice little weighted book. I like this a lot because it's got meanings for every card. It is a full color book. It is a full color book, right? And it talks also about the specific intentions of each um, color. So the colors are put together for a reason. And it does tell you why for each of them. And there's groups of these colors. 
Um, you'll see that in the walkthrough. They are grouped together when you first get it, and they are, you know, there's a couple of each color. So it's not just like, you know, most of them are going to be the same color, whatever. They did make groups of colors, and there is a reason for it. So I really like that they took the time to explain each color in here, what the purpose of each color is. Of course, you actually do have some stuff in the beginning. How to use the deck, preparing for a reading, shuffling the deck. You can, you know, there's spreads and all that fun stuff. Um, understanding the reading, aura reading. They give you different types of readings, which is nice. It also talks about additional uses, meditating with the cards, altars, things like that. Very important. Very important. I love that. And you guys heard me talk about that in the Magical Tarot review that I love when books take the time to talk about concepts such as magic, meditation, altars, spell work, things like that. Because a lot of us do use our decks in that way in our practice. And if we don't yet, we might get there, right? You never know. But like I say all the time, anyone can pick up a deck anyone on any leg of their journey can pick up a deck and it's very important to add these little things in your book so i really really love that it did include that so as you saw in the book this is your back colors of course um it's holographic on the gilding it's actually a gold holographic which is cool i usually see holographic silver or pink um but what bothered me when I initially saw this deck is that this, you know, the imagery doesn't represent the words that go with it, and it really bothered me. Um, but now, again, it's been a while since I first saw this deck on the market, so I've had time to learn and grow in my practice in, you know, in my time as a reader. And to see someone else use it really helped me to understand the purpose of the deck itself. Sorry guys, I'm really sorry. Whenever I pull out cards, it's usually like the tower. It's always like a crazy one, right? But anyways, the the imagery to me didn't speak to me. And I was a big um, intuitive reader um, when I first started. Uh, like I was very big on if the imagery spoke to me, that's how I bought a deck. And again, as I've grown as a reader, I've learned to understand that Sometimes the imagery might not speak to you. Sometimes the imagery might not be your favorite, but the contents of the deck itself, the, the, the words on the card that are used for the jumping off points of your reading, the meanings of the cards themselves, sometimes are going to be things that you would have never thought of, you would have never even looked into, right? And so I feel like that's why it's important to take a second look at decks um, that you don't like <laughs> because I do this all the time all the all the all the time still to this day I look at the mystic Mondays deck like is there something that I'm missing because I feel like the reason that I don't like a deck is a reason that I should also get the deck um, I've heard this before with crystals as well sometimes crystals that you don't like um, that uh, you're kind of pushed away from, you don't really like them, they don't appeal to you, things like that, are going to be the ones that you need to work with the most. And that's kind of how I've noticed myself throughout my life um, with people. Usually people that I don't like when I first meet them right off the bat, I'm like put off by their energy or I don't like how, you know, we we have a banter. Like sometimes those people end up being the people that I really love the most, that I'm closest to the most. And I can trace back most everyone in my life, most of my best friends, most of my relationships, right? Where I'm like, I did not like you. I genuinely did not like you. And I feel like that's how I am with this deck. I think I'm, I've been using this in readings. Yes, I'm, I think, I know I used them in my Halloween readings. I don't know if I used it in the 1010 reading, but I know that I used it in the Halloween readings. I know I've been using it on TikTok. And one of my, <laughs> one of my friends was like, um, hello, what deck is this? Cause I, I haven't been posting reviews. I do apologize for that. Sincerely, October has been kicking my ass. And also now November is starting off terribly, but clean slate, new day. Um, I don't have much to say about this deck right now. I have been working with it. I have been trying to build a relationship with it. Um, but cards like this come out a lot. Like I said, with me right now, um, 
this is kind of my relationship is like pushback with this deck. It's, you know, cards of rejection and death and pain and sadness and stop and all kinds of like really harsh messages. And I'm like, hey, can you give me something useful? Like, I know I'm sad. I know I have pain. I know that like I've been rejected or I have rejected. Like, why are you telling me this? Why is that important? But again, it also does make me stop as a reader and remember, hey, stupid, go look at the book. Um, these are things that we forget all the time, the fundamentals of reading a tarot or oracle deck. Um, there is a book that comes with it. That's why I start all of my reviews by looking at the book, because it is important. Yes, the cards are why we're here, but the book is important. It, it, it's the creator talking about why this card exists in this deck and what they intended it to mean right? Again, that may not be what it means to you as you build a relationship with that deck, but it is the groundwork of that card. It is the foundation of why that card exists. So I have been really taking my time with this deck, really trying to bond with it, putting it in readings immediately, um, which is not something I used to do with, with decks. I used to wait um, weeks, months before I ever put them in readings. And now I'm like, all right, let's put you to the test. Let's see how you work right now. This is one of those decks where it just immediately started giving me smoke. And I was like, all right, fuck, put you in a reading. Let's go, I guess. Shit. Um, some decks I've noticed I don't feel that way about mostly tarot decks where I'm like, I feel like this one needs to be bonded with. I feel like I, it needs my personal energy. It needs a more personal touch before I can put it in a reading. Um, but some of these like super simplistic decks like the OK Tarot and the Prism Oracle, I feel like I could immediately throw them into a reading and that's starting to add to the energy of it, which is also helping me form a bond. I don't have much to say about this deck just quite yet. I don't know how I feel about it just quite yet. Um, I have been using it. That's about it. <laughs> and I think that that's just because of the, look at that, just because of the cards it's been giving me. It's like every harsh card in the deck comes out whenever I use it. There are good cards in here, I promise. And the fact that Ash gets really fantastic readings out of this makes me feel like, hey, maybe um, it's, I need to do some shadow work, right? Maybe I need to start, uh, start paying a little bit of attention to myself internally because I know that there's good cards in here, I do. But I also know that there's harsh cards in here and I just so happen to get all of them right now. So anyways, this is one of those ones where I feel like you really need to create the relationship with this deck. And I feel like it's really important that you don't, um, if you decide that this is a deck you're interested in, I think that it's one that you should really understand that you don't turn it away just because you get a bad reading with it. A lot of people, um, newbies especially, when they get a deck, if they get a really harsh reading, they'll be like, oh my gosh, this deck hates me. I never want to touch it again. Or they'll try to cleanse it and then they get the same kind of reading and they're like, well, fuck, this deck isn't for me, right? And as a reader, I've learned that that's not quite the case. It's reflecting your energy back to you right now because that's what you need to hear. That's what you need to learn. Not all readings are sunshine and rainbows. Not all readings are going to tell you that they're coming back. Not all readings are going to be what you want to hear. But that's important. Just like talking with a family member. Every single day is going to be just kind of normal everyday talk, right? But every once in a while, someone's going to explode and they're going to have some shit to say. And it's usually things you need to hear. And I feel like that that's very important to learn and put under your belt as a reader because not all readings are going to be nice. They're going to be things you need to hear. Whether you can process it in that moment or not is dependent upon you and your work within your journey, okay? So if you get a bad reading from this deck, just kind of take it with a grain of salt. Be like, all right, fuck, my bad. Write it down, right? Write about how it makes you feel in that moment. It's important. It's a very important with decks like this. This is not something that I do regularly as a reader where I'm going to sit there and write down every single one of my readings because I'm the type of tarot reader where I do lots of clarification. I use lots of decks. So writing it down at this point in my journey is um, counterproductive to me. That's why I film my personal readings just for me because I need to see all of the cards. I need to see the energy in that moment, right? in order to be able to process it. Um, I think it's very important to understand that 
you may not be able to process a reading as you are pulling it. Yes, it's important to know that you, you feel about it a certain type of way. That is your guttural, visceral reaction to those cards in that moment. I feel like that is a reflection on how you personally handle things. Just things. Just things as they come up in your life, right? Um, if you get a bad reading and you react badly to it, take it as a lesson. Is that how you react to bad things in your life also? And use that as a jumping off point for your shadow work, right? It is shadow month season. So, you know, use it. Use the bad shit. Cry about it. Get mad about it. Fucking go rip up a book like a phone book. Go take out that anger on a uh, fucking canvas. I don't know. Do something constructive. St constructive. Do something constructive with the bad energy, but also understand that you need to take the bad with the good, okay? Not all readings are going to be good, and that's why I appreciate this deck. Not saying I like it yet. I'm just saying I appreciate it. I appreciate its existence, and I really appreciate Ash for bringing this deck to my attention again, right? Again, this is not a deck that I've seen ever used in readings before my friend Ash used it. Um, this is a deck that I've never, ever, ever, ever seen on a, on a YouTube video, on a TikTok video. Nobody uses it. Nobody has it. It's one of those reasons that I was never drawn to it. Um, when we're buying decks, usually we get ones that we see a lot, right? The Modern Witch, the Lightseers, the Rider Waite Smith. We see them time and time again. Everybody has them. So it's just one of those things where I was like, I don't like you, I don't want you, I, I'm not drawn to it, but maybe, maybe now on my journey, I'm a little bit more accepting and I should take a second look, right? Um, same as the, the OK Tarot. I was like, maybe I should just give it a, give it a chance, give it a second look. Um, I'm probably going to end up buying the Mystic Mondays for a third time one day because I'm at that point in my journey where I'm just like, maybe I should give it a chance. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it's got a lesson for me that I'm not learning yet. So again, that's my personal opinion. <laughs> that's my personal opinion, my personal gnosis on this deck, right? Do not take my gnosis about this deck as your experience with this deck. I have had quite mixed reviews on this deck. Um, when I posted about it on TikTok, I've had people say, it gives me really fucked up readings. I don't like it. And I've had people say, wow, that's a really stunning deck. I'm going to go get it. I've never seen that before. So again, depending on how you feel about it, about the deck, about the imagery, you know, Take it with a grain of salt because you have to create your own personal bond with it and just know this is one of the very few decks I've come across in my time as a reader that actually had bad cards in it. I don't mean bad as in like they shouldn't be there. I mean like, um, like negative cards. Sometimes you get a deck like the Whispers of Love Tarot where every single, or the Whispers of Love Oracle, where every single card is just butterflies and rainbows and it's so sweet and it's so nice and it's so beautiful and let me tell you I have never once never once used that fucking oracle deck this one has already been used 10 times more than that whispers of love will ever be used right so there it is there she is she purdy you know if shiny things attract you there you go it's got gold holographic gilding on it um just know that it may take some getting used to. It may take some real research and understanding of this deck uh, before you can start using it in a reading or before you feel comfortable enough to use it personally, right? I feel like this is a deck you need to do a lot of bonding with before you can start reading with it because you can't understand the messages right away. Um, again, my personal opinion, my personal gnosis, take it for what it is, right? It's a deck of cards. You do with it what you want to do with it. Um, I think that's what I got, to be honest, for this deck. Um, I did kind of have a lot more to say about this one than the OK Tarot. I was just excited about the OK Tarot because it's pink. Um, but this one has really challenged me as a reader, as a person, um, and I think that that's really good. That's really big. That's really important, at least for me on my leg of my journey right now, you know, five, six years into reading tarot. Might not be the best thing for you as a brand new beginner, right? Um, but again, don't take that as me saying don't buy it if you're a beginner. Do with it what you will. Do, do what you want. Boo-boo. You do you. Boo-boo. You got, you know, free will and whatnot. 
So I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you made it to the end, please do me a big favor and leave me a big old thumbs up. You know that that helps me out so very much. Let's me know that you actually watched the video all the way through. And of course it helps my content reach other viewers. I am really super grateful for everything, for all of the views, for all of the interactions, for all of the subs, for all of you that are here. And you already know, go ahead, tell me what you think about this deck down below. Have you seen it before? Do you want it? Do you not like it? Does your friend have it? let me know I'm genuinely interested and of course my link tree is in the description as always if you guys want to check me out across my socials if you'd like to follow me on TikTok I post there pretty much every day I'm more of a real person over there and you can see more tarot related content if you'd like tiny little readings if you'd like to hear my tiny little thoughts about decks or you know you just want to see my walkthroughs I do post my walkthroughs on TikTok as well um and yeah, I, I'm really super stoked to talk to you guys about the next couple of decks. I just need to find time to do it. I do have quite a few videos piling up that I need to do. I just, I don't ever have time anymore for filming. So I really hope that wherever you guys are, when this video reaches you, you have a beautiful, wonderful day. And don't forget you guys, I have a giveaway coming up. So if you are not already, um, you know, subscribe with post notification turned on, please do that because you, you need to see this giveaway when it's coming up. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, please go do that because that's where I do my giveaway stuff. So with that being said, my friends, have a beautiful, wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Blessed be.